When you load a spring with a force, it deforms with a corresponding displacement. But how the spring's resulting displacement actually corresponds with that force, and how much energy is stored inside the deformed spring, varies dramatically based on how the spring is designed and what material it's made of. In this episode of Compliant Mechanism Design, I'm going to explain the fundamentals of deformation in the context of common examples so you can know what you need to consider to design things that are intended to deform in specific ways. I'm Professor Hopkins, and you're watching The Facts of Mechanical Design. Before I get started, I wanted to warn you that this episode is one of the more difficult episodes, so please don't give up on the rest of the course if you don't understand it. The good news is that you should still be able to understand and apply everything else I teach in subsequent episodes without understanding the content presented here. So feel free to skip past any or all parts of episode 3 if they overwhelm you. Otherwise, Try sticking with them and see if you're up for the challenge. When you think of a spring, you probably think of a metal wire coiled within a cylindrical geometry like this one. But there are an innumerable variety of spring geometries that take on many different shapes and are made of many different materials. This spring is constrained to be stiff in all directions, except along the direction of the arrow shown. When it is loaded along the direction of the arrow, it tends to behave as a linear spring over a reasonably large range of deformation. You might recall from part A of episode two, that when you slowly load a linear spring with a force F in the absence of any other forces, the spring will displace a distance x along a straight line force displacement plot according to the function f equals k multiplied by x, where the slope of the plot's line is the spring's stiffness k. But what causes a spring to exhibit a particular stiffness anyway? The answer is important if you want to design a compliant mechanism with a desired deformation response to a load. You can change the slope of a linear spring's force displacement plot, and thereby adjust its stiffness, by changing any one of three characteristics. One, the spring's topology. Two, its geometry. And three, the material from which it's made. A spring's topology is defined by the kind, number, and arrangement of flexible elements that constitute its design. Typical kinds of flexible elements include coiled elements, wire flexures, blade flexures, or notch flexures, to name just a few. The topology of this particular spring consists of two parallel wire flexures and two blade flexures that are arranged on parallel planes, which are perpendicular to the direction of the spring's displacement, as shown. If you wanted to reduce the stiffness of this particular spring by changing its topology, you could do so by removing the two wire flexures, for instance, and the slope of the resulting spring's linear force displacement plot would decrease simply because it possesses fewer flexible elements to resist the loading force. The second way the stiffness of a spring can be changed is by changing its geometry. The geometry of a spring is determined by the parameters that define the geometry of the spring's flexible elements, such as their lengths, widths, and thicknesses. If you wanted to decrease the stiffness of our spring example further by changing its geometry instead of changing its topology as we previously did, you could increase the lengths and or decrease the thicknesses of the two remaining blade flexures and thereby reduce the slope of the spring's linear force displacement plot even further. The third and final way the stiffness of a spring can be changed is by changing the material from which it's made. 
If you wanted to decrease the stiffness of our spring example even further by changing its constituent material, you could make the spring out of a more compliant metal like copper instead of making it out of steel, which is almost twice as stiff as copper. Thus, by using copper instead of steel, the slope of the spring's force displacement plot is reduced even more. Although a spring's topology, its geometry, and the material from which it's made all affect the slope of a spring's force displacement plot, i.e. its stiffness, the same three characteristics can also affect the profile of a spring's force displacement plot, which brings us to our next topic. It's important to recognize that not all springs produce resisting forces that increase linearly as they are displaced. If the stiffness K of a spring does not remain constant over its intended range of deformation, then the spring is said to be non-linear and it will produce a force displacement plot that is no longer a straight line. Note that the slope, that is the stiffness, at different locations along this exponentially growing force displacement plot increases as the displacement increases. Thus, nonlinear springs that exhibit such exponential plots stiffen as they are deformed. Most springs tend to stiffen some amount as they are deformed. Even this spring, which is typically considered linear, begins to appreciably stiffen when it is deformed significant amounts compared with the size of its blade flexures. Some springs, however, like this example, stiffen immediately and dramatically when they are deformed even small amounts compared with their overall size. Although similar to the previous near-linear example, this mirrored version stiffens with greater nonlinearity because the spring's now symmetric blade flexures are required to stretch substantially more along their axes in addition to bending as the spring is deformed. And this stretching becomes more and more prevalent as the spring is displaced further and further in either direction. Another nonlinear spring design that achieves immediate and significant strain stiffening behavior, but only when it is loaded in tension, is shown here. Note that as the spring is pulled, its two pairs of opposing cylinders are gradually flattened together, which increases the size of their areas of contact and thus rapidly increases the spring stiffness in a nonlinear fashion. Although most springs tend to stiffen as they are deformed, some springs can be designed to decrease their stiffness and become more compliant as they are deformed. This example uses four slightly curved blade flexures that begin stiff in their initial near straight configuration. As the spring is loaded, however, its stiffness gradually decreases in a nonlinear way as the spring's blade flexures begin to curve more and more as they buckle and lose the ability to constrain the spring's shuttle. Some springs can even be made to exhibit a force displacement plot that flattens out to the extent that they achieve a near constant force over much of their range. In other words, the force remains largely the same regardless of how much the spring is displaced beyond the point where the force displacement plot plateaus. One of the more popular constant force spring designs used in industry employs a tightly rolled metal ribbon like the one shown here. When the spring is stretched from one position to another, the same force is felt at both locations as well as all the locations in between. Such springs are commonly used inside of seat belts and measuring tapes to achieve the displacement independent force capabilities desired for such applications. Although the topology and geometry dramatically affect the profile of a nonlinear spring's force displacement plot, as the examples of this section have clearly demonstrated, the role that material properties can play in affecting the profile of a spring's nonlinear force displacement plot should also not be underestimated. Whereas the elastic properties of most metals are linear and thus remain constant as they are strained, some materials, such as soft elastomers, exhibit nonlinear elastic properties that change as a function of the material's deformation. <laughs>
Thus, if a spring were designed with a topology and geometry that if made of metal would produce an exponentially growing nonlinear force displacement plot like this one, but the spring were instead made of a nonlinear elastic material, such as rubber, which achieves a diminishing nonlinear force displacement plot like this one, the spring itself would achieve a more linear force displacement plot as a consequence of its nonlinear elastic material behavior cancelling out the nonlinear effects of the spring's topology and geometry. So, in summary, if you want to engineer the stiffness of a spring along its entire deformation range so that it achieves a desired force displacement plot of any profile, linear or nonlinear, you need to consider the spring's topology, its geometry, and the material from which it's made.